Welcome to episode seven of Homegirls. It's going to be on Windows, which is a very fun topic. Very exciting. Very exciting. And I'm going to be easy. We're going to start with our introduction, which you might have heard before. It's a little bit of a flashback for all of us. It's a throwback. Yeah, throwback. Very good. Yeah. All right. Let's let's get it. All right. So total bop, total blast from the past. Yes. That, that is, was a bop. For those of you who don't know, that's Anton Donaldson talking to the press that, about his sister when a man came in through their window and crawled into bed with his sister. And yeah, and his sister screamed, and then Anton Donaldson came running in, and then yeah. Had kids. Had your wife. Yes, and he gave that very famous interview to the press. You know, they never found that person. Wow, so they never know, they never found out who broke in? No, you know, Fingerprints only work if you actually have matching fingerprints, uh, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, but on a happier note, that guy, Anton Donalds, I'm not saying his name wrong, uh, he became a real estate agent. That's so crazy to me, guys. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he, so, was a real, he did the right, I feel I like, like he made, he made he a money move. move. It was a good move. It's, it's Antoine, Antoine Dodson. Dodson. Oh, Dodson. He was adding an L to his name. Okay. Antoine Dodson. Dodson. But yeah, he became a real estate agent, and I feel like we've come full circle. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Props to him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, good for good him. Good for him. On that note, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Mises. And we're the homegirls. Today we're talking about, wow, well, if you didn't guess it, Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Windows really need a definition. I mean, we all know what Windows are and what they do, right? I agree. I feel I like it's, it's very clear what a window is. If you don't know what a window is, take a moment to Google it. I think you're going to be shocked. And if you're watching this live, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's that thing behind it. Um, so how important do you think windows are to a house? I would say very important. That is the correct answer. It's okay. very, they're very important. Okay. <laughs> windows keep the scary and unpleasant things out of our house. The intruders who climb into your windows, snatch your people out. Yes, yes. <laughs> but also rain, window, wind, windows, wind, bugs, and as ECs will tell us, negative pressure that can blow your house up. Yes. Yeah, ECs is going to talk about negative pressure and how the houses blow up. So windows are also make our house comfortable. They provide natural light. They provide warmth, a sense of beauty and openness. Now, I love windows. My mother loves windows. The house I grew up in was just full of windows, which is fantastic most of the time, but terrible when you had to clean them. Yes. <laughs> the house I currently live in has a ton of windows. In fact, the whole front of the house is just windows. This is true. Yeah. I've been there. I've seen it. Two stories of windows. Um, it is, like I said, a total nightmare to clean, but I love waking up every morning to the bright sunshine. It's just so, it like, sets, sets the tone for the day. Yeah, it's nice having natural light compared to like your little yellow light bulb that makes everything look nasty. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I could watch poetic about windows, about windows all day, but let's head back in time. Let's, let's do it. Let's go to the origin story. This is the, the Marvel, Marvel origin story of windows. <laughs> the great <laughs> or origin yeah. story. So windows have actually pretty much been around as long as there have been people living in dwellings, but not how you think. So when we think of window, we immediately think of something with glass in it, right? Yeah. Um, and that's not really the case. The original window was usually just a hole cut out of the home to allow lighter air in. And uh, also oftentimes to allow smoke out as well. Yeah. Because remember people are cooking in their home, it becomes very smoky. Having a window or some sort of hole in the wall to allow that smoke to escape really made the difference in quality of life. Yeah, for sure. The first, first time, time we actually, actually see windows, windows depicted in history, history is ancient, ancient Egypt, because you know they, they did a lot, lot of drawing. drawing. They did, yeah. Yeah, they even wrote in drawings. Mm -hmm. um, they did that. They did that. They, they did really that. did that. Yeah, they really did that. <laughs> uh, birds, birds with weird crooked feet. Uh, anyway, yeah. um, that's, that's the first time we see a window in like a depiction of people living with windows. And they mostly, because, because they're building out of, even their palaces are made out of this like brick mud wood, wooden substances, yeah, structures. Yeah. Uh, the windows were just cut out. And, and essentially, essentially they'd have 
uh, reed or woven mats placed over the windows in case it was raining, although it rarely rains in Egypt, but it does sometimes, or if it got, had cold wind or anything like that, they yeah. could just put it over the window. So there's no glass at this time. Okay, so it's really just like a, a it's hole. It's just a hole in the wall. Okay. Yeah. So the first time we really get what we consider glass, what would be modern, like if we went back in time and saw this, we'd be like, okay, yeah, that's a window, is the Romans. Oh, yeah. Nice. Imperial Rome is the first time what, that we know of that glass, glazed windows with panes of glass actually start to become used. And in fact, they've proven that some of the baths, the Roman baths, which we talked about in an earlier episode. Oh, yeah. We did. On pools, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them are even enclosed by glass. That's and cool. I know. In order to make, they, they realized very early on that glass created kind of that, um, you know, that heat and humidity, like an indoor pool or like a sauna effect. Yeah, yeah. So having your pool enclosed in glass, I almost said gas, eh, having your pool enclosed in glass would actually make the pool and the whole area warmer. And the Romans were very, very into very hot, like sauna. Yeah, yeah. Atmospheres. That's really cool. Yeah, I know. They also have, um, Romans were the first time, you're the first ones to really divide the windows into panes. And, you know, how we see our window with like, you know, squares. squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Panes yeah. Uh, uh, those were the first ones to really do panes. In fact, in Pompeii, in the ruins of Pompeii, they have found evidence of paint windows. Wow. Uh, obviously blown out. You know, yeah, yeah. The, the pirate plastic glass killed everybody. But yeah, so. um, there was evidence, you know, they, they found it. So we thank the Romans for that. That's really cool. I know. We're going to jump forward a few centuries into Byzantium, which is an offshoot of Rome. It's the eastern portion of Rome. When Rome falls, it's split into the western portion, which is Rome, and the eastern portion, which is Byzantium. And it's Byzantium where you start to see panes of glass being colored and used in churches. Oh, like the stained glass. The stained glass okay. window, yeah. So this is about the 12th century, which would be the 1100s, is where we start to see panes of colored glass being arranged to make pictures. And you're also seeing at the same time in mosques, because uh, essentially as the Byzantine Empire is growing, the Muslim Empire is growing as well, or the, okay. the Islamic Empire. Eventually they will take over Byzantium, but they're kind of developing this colored glass technique at the same time. So both mosque and Catholic Christian churches are yeah. putting these glass windows, colored glass windows in. Now, it's in Western Europe, though, that they really take it from just colored glass to actual images into the glass. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know the old story, I'm sure you heard this in your history class, the reason they had those stained glass windows with the stories in them is because most people couldn't read. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were using the stained glass windows to describe the, the par Bible parables, essentially, okay. right? So if you look and you saw the white man with brown hair, you would immediately know it was Jesus. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get into how controversial yeah. Jesus is, okay? Yeah. Because people will probably stop listening to our podcast. But, uh, spoiler alert, he wasn't white. But anyway, no, we're not talking about it. We'll continue. No, we're not, we're stop. No, yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> so it's um, in about 1250. Um, so now we're in the 13th century. Okay that they're real, really figuring out how to stretch glass and to make, to make it into these very large stained glass windows. That's really cool. Like, yes. how did they figure that out? <laughs> I know. How many mistakes were made for, like, that happy accident yeah. to happen? Um, in one in particular, the stained glass windows of Chartres Cathedral uh, in France, in the town of Chartres. It's uh, Notre Dame de Chartres because the French call all their large cathedrals Notre Dame. That's, did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. So the actual Notre Dame is a Notre Dame de Paris, uh, the Paris Notre Dame. Oh. Yeah. Notre Dame just means Our Lady. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. Of course, if you're in the United States, you call it Notre Dame. Yeah, I was about to say Fighting Irish, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to call it. It's Notre Dame. And Notre Dame de Chartres in the town of Chartres has a very famous stained glass window with a color of blue in it that has never been replicated at any other point in history. Oh my God. Yeah. What? What? And even now they don't know how they did it. 
That is so crazy. Yeah. Wow. And the mysteries me, of life. <laughs> let me pull up you know, to them the shot to uh, the date for that. It was completed, it was completed in, in wow, 1220. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it is famous for the the glass. It also is famous, uh, famous pilgrimage site if you're a Catholic, because that's supposedly where they have the veil of the Virgin Mary that okay. she wore when she gave birth to Jesus. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's real or not. Yeah, me either. I wasn't there. I wasn't there, so. We're not, we're not talking about that, right? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Move on, yeah. <laughs> Who knew windows would get so controversial? I know. It's also um, in this 12th and 13th century that they're figuring out how to make arched windows, which is why all those stained glass windows are pointed at the top. Yeah. It's at that point they figure out how to start to shape the glass into something more than just a rectangle. Wow. I know. And this is really interesting. Now we're going to hit the Middle Ages, which are, we're getting out of the 13th century, which is the 12th hundred, to the 14th and 15th century, which is the 1300s and 1400s. It's, centuries are confusing. Yeah, they are confusing. There's always a number before that. I know, because you're like 13th century and you're like 12, it was like the 12th century. Yeah. I'm like, what? It's because we started at zero. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. We just started at zero. So everything is kind of backwards. It took me a long time to figure that out, by the way. Um, <laughs> so anyway, in the Middle Ages, glass becomes cost effective, which is kind of a funny thing to talk about in the Middle Ages, right? Cost effectiveness of glass. When we're literally dumping poop, into moats in front of our houses. But thankfully, glass was affordable. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and essentially, glass becomes something that normal people can have. And when I say normal, I mean that middle class section. Yeah, not just like the wealthy. Yeah. So it wasn't just castles that start putting glass windows in. Because prior to that, even castles were just using like openings. Uh, class castles start putting glass in, and your upper middle class start to have glass on their windows as, uh, as well. In the 15th century, which is the 1400s, as we're entering into the Renaissance, uh, that's where glass has this huge blow up, and you're going to see most every house has glass. You would have to be very, very poor at that point uh, not to have glass. Wow, that's really interesting. Yes, the Italians and the French are both experimenting with glass in different ways. So you start to see more um, shapes of glass, larger, large, big windows, um, and you know, casement windows, which is a French uh, invention, by the way. Oh, yeah. really? And we'll talk about a casement window later on. But essentially, what a casement window is is a window that's hinged on the corner, and you need a little um, mechanism to roll it open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like car. No, well, yeah, it, it does look like a car, an old, let's see, people now don't even know what you're talking about there, so you don't do that anymore. Back when your car window didn't go up with a button. Listen okay. here, kids. <laughs> you had to spin it, and then it would go down, and then the other way rub. Okay, yeah. They're not going to believe us. They're like, wow, you crazy people. I know. Old people these days. Okay, anyway. Yes, like your car, what your car used to do. That um, is essentially a casement window. You would roll it, you, you wind the mechanism, and the window opens on a hinge. Okay. A hinge and to that. Oh, so these would go like up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, it would swing out. You could open the window. Because before that, they had windows, but if you wanted to get someone's attention, you had to like knock on the window. You could open the window. Yeah, you could open the window. Okay. The French invent a casement window, which opens. Convenient. This is a big deal. Yeah, that is a big deal. This is a big deal. And people promptly start falling out of now, <laughs> in the, the Italians had a method of punishment called defenestration. Do you know what that is? No. The Medici family of Florence was especially famous for defenestrating their enemies. And what a defenestration is, is you and your friend to pick up a third person who has offended you, run towards the window, and shuck them out of it. That is outrageous. That's a defenestration. <laughs> oh my God. They're just throwing people out of windows. Throwing people. And we know windows are very cost effective now, so we can afford to start tossing right, yeah. people out of the they, window. They can afford to point. replace the windows. Yes. The Medici family was very wealthy. They definitely could afford to replace the window. They probably threw. Um, so but yeah, defenestration was uh, something that could be put on your death certificate. Death by defenestration. Wow, the more you know. <laughs> yeah, the more you know. And I want to say for you grammar nerds out there, defenestration has the root word of 
the Nantua, which is French for glass. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. I know. So um, because people started falling out of windows, the, it is about the uh, 17th century that the English decide to start putting things in front of windows, like bars or um, even like wood or not wood stone like um balustrades in front of windows okay i was actually like, gonna ask you about that because you know we were saying like now they have glass i was gonna ask does they have bars like, yeah. in the okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know it was after enough was after. people fell out of the window for them to be like you know what i feel like we need to do something about this <laughs> oh like, thank I, god we've all learned our lesson yeah, yeah this is getting out of control so the English also in the 1600s event what's called the double hung window, which means you could open it in multiple ways from the top and the bottom. And that's in the 1600s. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that is pretty cool. Eventually windows do come over to the United States, but it takes a second. So when they're settling Jamestown, which happens in the early 1600s, actually, they're not bringing windows with them to Jamestown. No. That is just not, I mean, honestly, they were actually like, really unprepared, so they really didn't bring anything they needed. So I wouldn't have been surprised if they actually did bring windows. Like, yeah. We'll definitely need windows. We won't need corn to grow food, but we'll definitely need windows. Um, and they, they really messed up. <laughs> <that one. laughs> they really messed then up. Then they ate each other. OK. Uh, actually, yes. That actually happened, by the way. That actually yeah. did happen. That, that, they did that. They did that. <laughs> <laughs> they were desperate. Okay? They went there. Uh, but no, they didn't actually bring windows with them, nor did they bring the corn. And um, they messed up. So yeah, they go back in time a bit. They play themselves. And they again, they're, they're in hovels with like just holes in the wall. Yeah. Eventually, you get enough rich people over there, and they start complaining. What happens? Someone finally brings windows. God bless America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Typical American story. I right? know. <laughs> um, so we do eventually get windows in the new world, and we start putting windows on our houses. You get that kind of, um, I don't know uh, if you've ever seen like a New England window. It's very thick, and it has kind of like ripples in it because the glass has um, sand and stuff. Oh, OK, yeah. Because you need water to make to finish the window. Mm -hmm. And the hard, sandy water in the United States would cause this like ripple effects. Oh, the OK, so it's just because of the water that we had. Yeah, yeah, so we had very distinctive looking windows in the United States. That's cool. Um, ultimately, they do look normal, clearly, because we now have normal windows. Yep. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have ripply windows anymore in America. We can see right through them. We have a lot of other problems. Yeah, we have 99 problems, but ripply windows aren't one of them. Uh, yeah, at least we don't have ripply windows. Yes. It could be worse, Pinkies. Yeah. It could be worse. It could. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it could be worse. But anyway. Um, so also that kind of leads us to the modern day. In the modern time, there are eight different types of windows you can put on a house. And they come in all different shapes and sizes and varieties. And I'm going to talk about that later. But first, I want to talk about something very near and dear to our hearts here in Houston. Yeah. The windstorm. Yeah. So I'll be talking about the impact resistant windows, which I'm sure you can already guess what those are for. <laughs> <laughs> Versus our regular window. Versus our regular window. So first I'm going to start off with window design. So a hurricane window or impact resistant window uses shatter resistant glass to prevent damage. Usually the, gr the glass remains inside a strong aluminum frame and if high wind sends an object into your window, the frame and the glass is strong enough to withstand it. So it won't completely like break your glass. You won't, you won't have glass flying everywhere you'll be okay. <laughs> and a second layer of glass on the windows allows the outer layer to break. So it will break, but it won't, it won't fully break. It'll, it'll be like, it'll just crack it really, right? It just makes these big cracks in it. Yeah. But it won't break. Instead, the stars, so it's not perfect. Is yeah, what you're saying. it's not perfect. It's still, you'll probably still have to replace it. <laughs> well, well, so yeah, so, so basically what you're saying is when something flies at a house, Say a roof shingle. Yeah, so let's say we a, talked about that. a clay shingle. Tile. Yeah, clay <laughs> flies at your house and hits the window, and you're like, oh my god, what is that? It's not going to fly into your house and decapitate. Yes, yes. it is not going to get inside. It's going to crack your window, but it will not completely break through it your window. It will not break it. Yeah. OK. So on the other hand, regular windows only have one layer of glass, and if that glass breaks, then you're screwed. <laughs> then water and wind can get into your home and you can experience severe damage in a storm 
when you only have standard windows. It's really that if your home cracks open or the windows crack open and break during a windstorm, what happens to the house? It's it's gonna be a disaster in there. <laughs> it's going to blow up. It's gonna, it's gonna blow, blow up. up. Yeah. Everything, Everything inside, inside your house, house is gonna, is gonna start, start flying at you. Yes. 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 If you've yes. ever seen a image of a hurricane where it looks like a nuclear bomb went off, that's because the negative pressure. Did you talk about this? No. No. Okay. That, that is because the negative pressure enters into the home through the window, the, window, yeah. the broken window, blows off the roof and blows the walls off. Kind of like, like if you were in space, space and like somebody, oh, oh my god, god. Yeah. yes, so you were in the hatch. Yeah, exactly, like if you were in space and someone opened the hatch, boom, everything flies out, kind of like that, kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> good lord. So another thing to think about apparently is preparation. So if a hurricane is headed towards you, then you have you have a lot to think about. <laughs> you between making evacuation plans if you have to, you know, stocking up on food and stuff, you have your hands pretty full. So worrying about your windows only adds more to your list of things to do. Now, if you have standard windows, it could take hours to prepare them because apparently people are, are, are supposed to prepare their standard windows for a storm. Yeah, so not where we live. Um, Houston, if, if you live in a Gulf Coast area, you're separated by evacuation zones. Yeah. And we are not. Yeah. So we're because not. we're not in an evacuation zone, we do not have to put up the shutters. Yeah, we don't have to do that. We mainly deal with high water, yeah. not high wind. But, but I'm guessing like in Galveston, yeah. that is something you have to do. You have yes. to put up the shutters on your windows. And regarding the shutters, I want to point out for those of you listening, you cannot use oriented strand board oh, yeah, no. to, as shutters. You have to use plywood Okay. because um, projectiles fly right through OSB, it'll crack in half. Oh, so it's, it's useless. <laughs> yeah, so then you have a window and OSB and whatever flew into your house flying into your house. No, yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, we don't we know. want that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. Continue. So hurricane windows give you one less thing to worry about, which you, need, which you should be worrying <laughs> about stuff like this. But um, instead of uh, securing your windows, you can focus on what really matters, and that is the safety of... You and your family. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you you may not want to have windows that need high maintenance and impact resistant windows are not. They're not high maintenance apparently. They're they're just there. They're just I didn't there. know that. Yeah. Hmm. And standard windows don't have to be either, but they are when a hurricane is coming. If you have to like do the shutters and stuff, then it does become high maintenance. And you have to install the storm shutters. And then when the storm comes, the shutters have to come back down. So if you have impact resistant windows, you're saving time and you know you're protecting your home from you know intruders maybe <laughs> and oh yeah actually elements. you are it is a um security glass yeah, yeah yeah so yeah that's pretty cool no one's gonna climb in your window and snatch it exactly off. if yeah. you have an impact resistant window nobody's, nobody's gonna, gonna snatch your people up you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll talk about appearance so if you have standard windows then you need shutters or another layer of protection depending on where you live really and that protection takes up space it requires storage and sometimes that storage is in in plain sight sometimes you don't have anywhere to put your shutters and you got to put them out where everybody can see them and they look ugly okay <laughs> and they the, the fasteners have to stay on the side of your house yeah and those they're, are, they're not pretty they're not they're not I mean, attractive they're not that attractive no. yeah so um when you okay wait did i say that sorry let me see Okay, yeah. When you have standard windows, your hurricane protection can affect the appearance of your home. So yeah, impact windows don't require any added protection. It's just a window. You don't need shutters. You need. To, you don't need to leave anything out. You're good. So they leave your home's appearance unaffected. And impact windows can apparently they can add to the appearance of your home. There are many different styles and types of hurricane windows to choose from. Yeah, and it goes into those eight different styles of windows. Yeah. You can get a hurricane impact resistant yeah, so, made into those. Yeah, it's not just one type. You got options. You got options. You got options. You get it. You can find a style that... that you don't have it. an excuse. It's ugly. I don't want it. Yeah, exactly. You don't have that excuse here. You have options. Yes. So yeah, so yeah, important, important. <laughs> so while so standard, standard windows provide, provide a smaller, smaller protection, protection, protection from the elements, elements, they do they not do not protect, protect your, home. your home. And without and the without shutters, shutters, standard, standard windows, windows break, break, break high winds, and, and this can cause water and damage inside your home. So if so you want protection during high winds, then you you need to install the hurricane shutters like we talked about earlier. However, they require preparation, and when high winds come without warning, 
you could be at risk. Sometimes, sometimes it happens, happens and you don't even know. know. And you didn't you put, put your shirt on. on. And you're screwed again. That's mostly for like tornadoes. Yeah. Very rarely does a windstorm take us by surprise. Yeah. Like usually. Yeah. Hurricanes, we usually know about them. Yeah. But there are places where. But also, they move rapidly. So, like Hurricane Laura. Oh, yeah. yeah. For hours, they were like direct hit, direct hit, direct hit. Yeah. evacuate, yeah. evacuate. And then it didn't even rain. It didn't even rain. Not a yeah. bit. Not, not even a little bit. So, imagine though, if. They had not warned us it was coming, and it, it was coming. And like, yeah. Was so or sometimes hurricanes change directions, and yeah. then they come, and it's too late, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta be. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta be cautious. cautious. You gotta, you gotta be cautious. cautious. So, like we said, like we heard in the beginning, um, standard windows also leave your home vulnerable to intruders. <laughs> no matter what type of windows, uh, standard windows you have, they're not as secure as impact windows because of the way they're made. And impact windows won't shatter. So an intruder can't easily break into your house with impact windows. But like we said, standard windows can shatter. So if anybody wanted to throw a rock at your window and break in, easy. There they go. Yeah. So yeah, some home, well, some people choose standard windows over hurricane impact windows, um, just based on cost, cost decision. But while it is true that they cost less than impact windows, it's not true in in the long term. Yes. Because if they exactly. end up breaking, you're going to have to replace the window. I feel like we, this is it for a lot of things. When we talk about plumbing, when we talk about electrical, like just take the plunge and spend the money up front because it'll save you a ton of money in the long run. Yeah, exactly. Like if you, if you were to get standard windows and they just keep breaking in like storms and stuff, then you should, you're wasting money already. Yeah. You're already wasting money there. I want to add, uh, and I'll talk about this later, but in the state of Texas, there are certain areas where you have to have impact resistant windows. Oh, yeah. And I think Florida too, when I was like reading online, they talked a lot about Florida and like you have to look up the codes of yeah. where you live because it might be required for you. Yeah. But I don't think here in Houston it is required. Not in this part of Houston. Yeah. If you live on the ship channel yeah. in, in like Kima. Yeah, like closer to Galveston. Mm -hmm. in that area. The closer you get to the water, the more likely you are required to have impact resistant yeah. windows. Which is good. <laughs> and like I said, we don't live in an evacuate uh, evacuation zone. So there's no reason at yeah, all. Yeah, no, we don't, we don't have them. Windows. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, often the cost of installing hurricane shutters makes standard windows the same price as impact windows. I'll get so that. So it's really the same thing, guys. <laughs> if you have to get shutters and stuff, it's, it's almost the same price as your impact resistant windows. Oh. <laughs> I said, oh, hi. All right. <laughs> I was like, who is walking in here? <laughs> okay, anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> let me repeat that because I got, I got, I got scared. <laughs> so often the cost of installing hurricane shutters makes standard windows the same price as impact windows. So like we said earlier, uh, <laughs> your standard window, you might need to buy shutters for all your windows, and that already adds to the price, like, on top of your regular windows. So, it's the same. Yeah. You should just take the plunge. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Someone just walked in on us, I by know. the way, is what happened. Yes. <laughs> Someone just walked in on <laughs> And then awkwardly shut the door. I know, because literally I heard beep, 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 beep. <laughs> oh, okay. Who's here? <laughs> oh, God. All right, is my turn? Yes, it is your turn. Cool. That's well, my spiel. That's her spiel. It's her PSA. That's my PSA on Windows. Yeah. Get the impact resistant yeah. Windows. Right. <laughs> I have no SpongeBob meme for that, but I feel yeah. like there should be. Uh, I'll have to look. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look it up. Okay, so let's talk about the window in the modern home. As I mentioned, and we've said it a couple times, there are eight different types of windows. And I'll talk about those in just a second. Let me talk to you about the anatomy of a window. That's right, I said anatomy. Um, we start with the window sill. Everyone knows what a window sill is, right? Yeah, it's like the little yeah, it's the that base. part that your dogs scratch up when they get mad at something outside. Yeah, or where your cat sits. And yes. Oh my God, yes. Or yes. where well, you put plants. That's what we have on ours. Is a succulent. Yes. So you know, lots of possibilities. I do love a good window sill. You can sit in some of them. Yeah. Some people have like cushions. I'm on so them. jealous of those. People. I know, and they just like. You just sit there, you read a book, and you look out the window. <laughs> Listen to Carol King. You know yeah. who Carol King is? No. Oh my God. 
All right, we're done. I'm not, I'm not doing any more today. <laughs> All right, we're leaving. I can't. That's it. That's it, folks. All right, I'm going to head out. Disgusting. All right. So the opposite of a windowsill is a window head, which is the horizontal piece at the top of a window. So a sill is at the bottom, the head is at the top. The, the vertical piece is at the side of a window. It's called a jam. So sill at the bottom, head at the top, and then you got the jams on both sides. Total jam. Nice. That's a jamb. J-A-M-B. A jamb. A jamb. Yeah. Uh, not like a strawberry jam or okay. a jam session. It has a B. Yeah, a jam. So then you have the mullions, which are the vertical pieces between the glazed units. The rails are the horizontal pieces between the glazed units. Glazing just means the glass portion of the window. There's something called insulated glazing unit, which is refers to a double or triple panes of glass sealed together to provide an insulation value. And we'll talk more about that when we get to energy efficiency. But you should know that there is gas between your glass. Yes. So when you have an energy efficient window, you have multiple panes of glass or even a um, high impact window. Yeah. You have multiple panes of glass and in between those panes of glass are gas. It's hard to get out. Then we also have something called a condensation track, which is a channel at the interior sill level. So that's the bottom of the window intended to intercept small amounts of water condensing on the interior surface. So condensation in your window is normal. You just don't want it to get on the wooden part of your windowsill because it'll start rotting it out. Yeah. So that's where that condensation track comes in. Wow, who knew that I know. windows had all these parts? We know there's so much window anatomy. Uh, all right, now as promised, I'm gonna chat about the eight types of windows. Yeah, there's the double hung and single hung. They go in one category. So technically there's nine types, but double hung and single hung go in the same category. Okay. The double hung is when you have two, the top and the bottom of the window opens. Okay. Remember the English invented that? Oh yeah, yeah. we talked about that. Yes. The single hung is when the window just opens vertically. So that's like basically most windows in your oh, house. Yeah. yeah, okay. Open the window, that's how you do it. Okay. Single hung. A casement window, remember the French invented this. Yes. Is the hinge window that opens by turning a crank or a mechanism. Okay, yeah. The awning window is hinged at the top and opens outward. So at the top opens outward. And we'll okay. have pictures of this on the blog. Um, the picture window is super duper trendy right now. It's just a large stationary window and it has no rails or mullions in it. So there's no like lining going through the window. Okay. A transom window, in a historic house, the transom window was above the interior doors to allow air to flow through the house at night. So you could shut your door for privacy, but you would have these transom windows that would allow airflow so everyone's not dying in the heat and humidity. That's convenient. I feel like it made it worse though. <laughs> um, <laughs> but today's modern transom windows are usually on the exterior of the home above your front door. So that accent window above your front door, okay. that's yeah. a transom window. The one that's just like literally yeah, like like line, line. Yeah. yeah, that's a modern transom window. A slider window might be what you have in your apartment. It slides like horizontally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's instead of a single hung window, it slides up. Yeah, a, a slider slides horizontally. A stationary window doesn't open, and the big thing, the big difference between your picture window and your stationary window, because a stationary window can be as big as a picture window, is that the stationary window does have those lines through it. Okay, so okay. that's the difference. The other one doesn't have them, but right. this one does. The picture okay. window is just one large piece of glass. The stationary window has the lines through it. Now, you can't open a picture window or a stationary window. You can't open them. They just are close they're at just, all the time. They just are. Okay, they're just, they're just being, they're pretty. Okay, they're just for the looks. Yes. Then you have a bay window, which is a window that adds an extension to the interior of the home. So the confusing thing about a bay window is it can actually be any of the other windows I just described. Oh. <laughs> but because it adds square footage to the home, that's what makes it a bay window. Okay. And you know, they usually like those kind of like, hexagonal shapes. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, mine is a big block. My bay window, the front of my house is a big window. So it like sticks out. It sticks okay. out. Yeah, it adds square footage to the home. That's why, but it's super confusing because you can have any of the other type of windows in that bay window area, okay. but it's called a bay because it's adding square footage. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Water. Are you tired mm -hmm. of hearing about water yet? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, no. Water. We love water. Drink water. I, I, I don't know. It's like the sadist in me just loves talking about how water just destroys your house. It's really, it's really crazy that I'm, I'm not water sorry. Does this much? Like when water is really out here ruining lives. I know. <laughs> and saving them at the same time. It doesn't make sense. You need water to live, but also, you know, it hates you. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, water is not your window's friend. Surprise, surprise. The first sign of water damage inside the window is condensation between the window panes. So like little drops, but like inside. But inside, I mean, yeah. You, like, you so can't wipe it away. Exactly. So if you can wipe it away, that means it's normal. But if it's in between the panes of glass where that gas is supposed to be, yeah, then it's not normal. Then something is up. Yes. So you can have water uh, condensation on the inside and the outside of the window. That's both to totally fine, okay. but it's when it's inside the panes of glass. Okay. The first sign of water damage outside the window, so now we're standing outside the window, is soft areas around the jams, which is the side, the sill, yeah. the bottom, or the head. Um, and then wood rot can also be a sign of water damage. And unfortunately, when water damage is added to humidity, that's when you get mold. Yeah. And we're going to talk about mold next time. Yeah, next time we'll have a full on episode. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about mold too much. Yeah. The only way to prevent water damage is to have properly installed windows. How many times in our relationship have I said the only way to prevent this <laughs> is to have things properly installed? I was, I was about to say, I feel like we hear that a lot. <laughs> but the good news is often windows are properly installed. Yeah, I feel like it's not that common to see stuff like that happen, even here. Well, you know, unless you live in my neighborhood where they oh. caulked the stucco with bathroom caulk around the windows yeah. <laughs> instead of proper plastopolymer caulk, and as a result, we just have water pouring in through our windows. I'm not... I feel like I have to bring this up every episode. I'm just like, it's just a never ending nightmare. For me. It really is. It really never is. ending nightmare. Anyway, let's talk about window insulation. Um, did you know, ECS, when they, when you get new windows, the first thing they do after they pop out your old window is they just stick the new window in there to see if it fits. Now, how obnoxious would it be if they like popped out your old window and went to stick in the new window and it didn't fit? And then just like, now you have a hole in your house until they figure that out. I'd be pissed. Yeah. I would throw hands. But that doesn't really happen very often, but yeah, that'd be like super duper annoying. I know. I'd be like, you're just going to leave a hole in my wall. I mean, they put, your, they would put your old window back in, but still, it's like, come well, on. I already took it out. Yeah. Come you're just going to put it back in. And Ugh. <laughs> All right. So window insulation. First thing they do is measure, right? Before you remove anything, please measure and make sure you have the right size of windows. Yeah. Then they remove the existing window. Then they prep the area. And so they're looking at this point for any signs of water damage or structural damage. And then they pop the new window in for what's called a dry fit. And in the dry fit, they're gonna level the window. They're gonna double check to make sure it's actually uh, square by measuring the diagonals. Then they're going to pop the window back out, the new window. They're going to cut the siding um, to make sure the new window fits perfectly. At this point, they'll apply the first level of caulk, which is almost like a glue. And then uh, they're going to pop the window back in, caulk it some more, trim the shims, which are just the things you kind of use to jam the window in there, yeah. add insulation, fix the flashing, and then paint finish the window. Wow. Yeah. I feel like that's it. It's so easy. Listen, you it's think not. it's easy and then you try it and you're like, okay, I'm yeah. messed up. <laughs> I need to hire a professional. I know. Now, let me talk real quick about window flashing. Um, flashing, we have talked about in the roof episode. So you might have heard this before. Yeah. But window flashing is not, it's not that different than roof flashing, but it is a little bit different in that it's sometimes a tape. So sometimes they're using flashing tape to flash windows. Uh, sometimes they're using metal, but it's the same idea as roof flashing. It's basically there to catch the rain blown at an angle onto the home. So window flashing is not a gutter system. It just deflects the rain. Okay, it just makes it go into another direction. Yes. Whenever you get new windows put in the home, you want to make sure they also install the flashing. That's a big one. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's important. Yeah, it's really bad if they don't have flashing. Let's talk about safety. So remember at some point in history, people were just falling out the window? And being thrown out. Yes. <laughs> this is still a problem. <laughs> I know. I, this is like, we're like, does evolution even exist? Have we, have we not figured out how to not fall out windows? Like, how, how does something like that happen? <laughs> Toddlers. Okay, yeah. That makes They're sense. the ones falling out the windows. They're the ones evolution missed. Um, <laughs> so because of that, there is something called egress requirements and window requirements and code requirements. Good. Good. The egress requirement is simply something um, that refers to an exit. In the state of Texas, as in most states, every room that's being used as a bedroom must have an egress. And that egress is either gonna be a window or a door. And the purpose of that is they need this egress to escape in case there's fire. Um, if you have a window that's an egress, the requirement is it must be 5.7 square foot minimum unobstructed opening, 44 inches or less from the interior floor, a minimum of 20 inches wide, and a maximum of 24 inches high. And the purpose of this egress window, as I said, is fire escape, but it has to be large enough to pass a human adult. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. I know. Um, in my old apartment, we lived on the third floor, and our plan, if we got stuck, was to just throw the dog out the window. <laughs> oh my God. And throw ourselves out the window, because we'd rather have a broken leg than get burned to death, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Some real scary stuff. That's what I always hated about living, because in D.C., your apartments are interior apartments. They don't exit to the outside. Oh, yeah. Like they do here. Yeah, that's so true. So there was always that kind of worry, like, if there's a fire, how am I going to get out, you know? Yeah, that is concerning, especially, like, because you walk out and they're still inside. Yeah, exactly. You still have to get through a hallway, down the hallway, to the fire stairs, and the fire stairs are still inside. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, we were just like, yeah, we'll just throw the dog and throw ourselves. Out the window. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive. You survived it. It would hurt, but you survive as long as you didn't like go ahead first. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, more requirements. Windows in bathrooms and in stairwells must be made with tempered glass. So what tempered glass is, it's not impact resistant. It is shatter resistant. So normal glass shatters into large pieces. Okay. And can cut you and hurt you very badly. Tempered glass breaks uniformly, and then falls uniformly into small pieces. It's what you have in your car. Okay. So if you've ever been in a car accident and you've seen like little tiny square shards of glass on the road, yeah, that's because it was made with tempered glass. Okay. So it'll still break. It just breaks uniformly. So you're not getting any of these serious cuts. And yeah, no, because some, some glass, you'll break it and it'll be like a knife. Like. Mm -hmm. I know someone who died from falling through um, uh, I know them secondhandedly. They were part of the Girl Scout troop when I worked for the Girl Scouts. That she was like involved. Wow. In the she died falling through a plate glass shower door. The shower door was a safety glass. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I know. So scary. So other tempered glass requirements, the windows or side lights within 24 inches of the door must be tempered. Windows larger than nine square feet and less than 18 inches off the floor must be tempered. And then windows less than 60 inches from the floor of a bathtub or a shower. So what about energy efficiency? We're gonna get to that in a second. Energy efficiency is not part of building code. Okay. So you're not required to have energy efficient windows. Okay. Now Texas bases most of their building codes off of the International Code Council and I think you find most states do that as well. However, the codes don't apply to older homes. So if the home was built before 1978 and it has the original windows, they could be just normal windows. Okay. That's a big thing to know. I also want everyone to remember, depending on what state you're in, your home inspector might not be inspecting to code. It's such as in Texas. Traffic inspectors are not code inspectors. This is true. Yeah, they only inspect to track regulations, not the full ICC code. Which is right. kind of weird. Yeah. That is kind of weird. But anyway, windstorm. We already talked about windstorm. Yes. So I'm just going to say this. If you recall, I said in the state of Texas, certain uh, coastal Gulf Coast communities must have windstorm windows. Yeah. 
So in this Houston area, it's lower parts of Houston, lower parts of Brazoria County, and all of Galveston County that has to have windstorm windows. And that's an, if, I should have said all of Galveston County, excuse me, most of Galveston County. And that includes all of the part of Galveston County that's literally on the beach. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because I mean, if a hurricane is forming, it's, it's, it's dropping right there. <laughs> it's, it's dropping there. there. Yeah. yeah. So, so the other, other thing you should know is that, is that you have to get a separate type of um, inspection for insurance purposes. For the for, for windows? For windows and uh, roofs for windstorm. Oh. If you live in a part of Texas that gets affected by windstorm and you're in that required area, you have to have a separate inspection done on the home for insurance purposes for them to insure your home. Wow. Yeah. And that's done by the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association. And that's a different inspector, not a track inspector. So okay. that's not a home inspector. And um, did you talk about the support for the windstorm windows? No. Okay. So did you mention that the, um, the reinforcement of the window is usually steel? I think so. Okay. So most windows are PVC or wood. That's okay. the frame of the window. It's okay. PVC or wood. With a uh, impact resistant window, the frame of the window is either going to be steel or something um, even more powerful called finesta, Ooh, which again has that root word for the window. Yeah. Look how fancy we are. Wow. I know. I know. All right. Let's talk about energy efficiency. Did you know that heat loss and gain accounts for 25 to 30% of residential heating and cooling issues? I did not know. I know. Once you own a house, you'll know. You should be like, holy oh, crap. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm acing the outside. That's why all dads are grumpy. That's why all dads are mad at the thermostat. Yeah. It's because you are literally cooling or heating the outside, depending on the time of year. I'm glad I don't have a house yet, guys. Yeah. After these podcasts, I'm afraid. <laughs> There's two ways to improve energy efficiency in the home using windows. You can either update existing windows or replace your windows completely. To update existing windows, you can use caulk and weather stripping to make the windows more airtight. You can also add window treatments like solar control film to the windows and that's gonna stop the sun from making your house so hot. Nice. The replacement window for energy efficiency, you wanna look for a window that's Energy Star certified and that's going to be like in the corner. It's etched in the corner. Yeah. Right Is it like a sticker or something? It might be a sticker. I, I don't. I don't know. I feel okay. like sometimes it's that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Either or. Either works. Anyway. However, the only way these Energy Star certified windows are going to work is if they're installed properly. So, of course. Yeah. Your window can still be leaking even though it's Energy certified if they didn't install it properly. Not surprised. I know. Not surprised. I just feel like we're repeating ourselves over. And over. <laughs> I know. We're always like. Eh. It's not installed properly. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we won't be talking about anything installed properly with mold. That's true. That's that's so, the good news. We're not gonna have to say that word. Yeah, we won't have to we won't have to bring that up again. <laughs> At least <laughs> next time. So window remediation. Some window remediation can be DIY. You can actually install your own windows. Um well, would I recommend it? I mean if you're Experience and handy, maybe you can do it. Me personally, no, I would not even <laughs> let my fiance do it. <laughs> if you're building a shed, yeah, maybe if you're building a shed, maybe. yeah, because you're not living in there. Put windows in your she shed, yeah, she sheds are nice, yeah, uh, but maybe not your house, yeah, not your house. I would. I would personally just call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is it's actually really easy to find window contractors, um, home. Depot and Lowe's and those, you know, any type of home store, they're going to actually have people, you know, contractors that work oh, for them that will cool. install your windows. You can also go with a private company. Um, they might have a better cost. Okay. Uh, the cost depends on the type of window and how many windows are being installed. So it can be 200 to 1800 per window. That's and a lot. Again, it's how many windows are being installed. That's, That's really where they get yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Some houses, like my house, have a lot windows. Yeah. <laughs> it, luckily, if a single pane of glass needs to be replaced, it is possible to replace that single pane. Like if a baseball or a soccer ball goes through your window, you can replace 
just the glass. Okay, so, so you, you don't have to, to reinstall. Yeah, you don't have to rip out the whole window. window. You can just replace the glass. Okay. The cost though depends, depends on what type of glass it is. So you know, obviously, if it's impact resistant, it's going to be more more expensive to replace that hurricane glass. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's about fifty dollars or more per pane. Again, depending on what type of a window you already have. Yeah. Now, what about homes built before 1978? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's your CT. Um, we're going to talk, talk about this next week, too. Okay, cool. okay. So, spoiler alert. Spoiler. 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 I'm sorry. The home, if a home was built before 1978, there's a chance that it could have lead paint. <sighs> yeah. Come on, people. Dang it, man. There's always something. The 70s were a crazy time, man. What were they doing back then? <laughs> they thought this was all going to work. <laughs> so the problem with lead paint is it flakes. It does off-gas, but you know, off-gassing is not as serious of a problem as the flaking. It's when you ingest those flakes through your mouth that you can get brain damage. And I will tell you, Isis, who is sitting there eating the paint? Who is it? It's the toddlers. It's the toddlers. I it's swear to God, toddlers. it's like they want to die. I know they don't. They don't know what they're doing. They're, Jeez, they're still learning. I swear. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot deal with the constant chattering, the singing, the paint eating. That's why I know when I have a, a, a kid, I'm gonna be the most stressed out mom. Like, I know. When I was younger and I was watching my brother, I would get scared with him all the time. We'd go to the river, river walk. I'd be like, I'm not jumping there. I'm not getting there. <laughs> This is why I have dogs these days. Hey. My dogs don't eat paint. Well, I mean, well, that's well. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so even if the windows are redone, or if you have multiple layers of paint over that lead paint, that's as most, most houses, houses do, do right? right? Yeah. Very rarely do you keep an original paint color. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. That lead paint still flakes off and dust and causes dust. And the issue is a weak point is the window. So that's why you get a lot of lead paint chips around windows. Okay. Yeah. Don't eat it, people. If you see it, something on the floor, don't stick it in your mouth. Just, just, this is not a hard concept. Just sweep it up and throw it away and move on. <laughs> Didn't we talk about how toddlers were falling down the septic tanks too? Yeah. Oh my God. We did. <laughs> falling out windows, falling out of the septic tanks, eating, eating the paint. paint. What's next, man? I quit. What's so, next? I can't do this. How did any of us survive? I don't know. I How don't did know. any of us survive these We days? made it through. We I made love, it through. I love that picture you have. Oh. The <laughs> <laughs> slide. I have a picture of Jim from the office staring through a black. It's a meme, too. Yeah. yeah. We're, I'm uh, actually watching it right now. Are you? Because my sister has never seen it. So we're watching it with them. Oh, God, I love it. So when we were in quarantine, Chris and I sat on the couch and watched all nine seasons. So that's what we did in March. It, in I, the beginning. It, it never gets old. It's always just no. as funny. There's always a new joke to find. Honestly. Because like, honestly, we thought our life was over. So we were like, yeah, we're just going to sit on this couch and never get off this couch and watch The Office. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's, I feel like everyone was panicking. I, I don't think I need to justify my panic. No, I, I was there with you. Yeah, so, and you know, the funny thing is we sat in that couch to death and then we had to buy a new couch. Yeah, yeah but this is true. true. They don't want a couch right now. No, no, <laughs> there, there are air mattresses on the floor. <laughs> we are sitting on air mattresses with like those back pillows, you know, like the oh. ones that your mom has you used when you have a cold. Yeah, but yeah. you also have the arm. Yes. yes. Well, the whole the cookie monster. What? I don't know why. <laughs> why? Because I think we had a blue one. Oh. Was, like, it's totally like cookie monster. Yeah, so we're, so we're sitting on air mattresses and cookie monsters right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the dogs are loving it. They think it's hilarious. So, I love that. Yeah. yeah. We'll get a new couch eventually. They're yeah. living it up, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, is it time for credits? It's time for credits. All right. Our, Our music credit is Kevin Cloud and Incomptech. Our source credit is the Encyclopedia Britannica. Nice. What? Have we used have we used that before? I think we have actually. Okay. But, but you know, know, you do know they used to buy you used to have to buy them. Yeah. Like, like isn't there several volumes? Yes. Every year they would issue a new one. What a waste of time and paper. I wonder who was really out here just like buying them all. <laughs> Remember your elementary school library you had like a whole section of just old encyclopedia. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
good old, good old days. Good old days. Uh, anyway, make sure to check us out on YouTube at A Action Home, Home Inspection Group Houston, Houston, on, on Facebook, Facebook, on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok. Yep, you guys are young. Know, at guys Houston are, you know. Home Inspection, because we are TikTok famous. Yes. I think we can brag about that. We can brag about it, yes. yes. Okay. 35,000? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> and as, as I mentioned, our next episode is on hold. I'm excited Sorry, for that one. Which is fantastic, which is fantastic because, because it is the start of season, season starting, starting tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. My birthday's this month, guys, so I'm ready. <laughs> My body is ready for spooky season. You know, this whole year I've been in denial. I feel like I've been stuck when the pandemic started, right? Yeah, for but sure. I feel like October, not to put a fall pun in here, but we're turning over a new leaf. Yes. I think. Uh, I hope, I, I sincerely, sincerely hope things are going to get better. Me too. If Me too. not, we will have tons of bags of candy to eat because there will be no trick or treat. I know. I know. So, so uh, uh, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. It is. But I feel like mold is a great episode for spooky season. Yes, it is. It is because mold is a monster. Mold is a monster, guys. And you do not want it in your house. No. It, 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 it makes you sick, right? It, it is neither vegetable nor mineral nor animal. So what is it? What is it? We'll find out next time. Time. Be mom. Be mom. I'm Mary. And I'm Lisa. And, 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 and we're the homegirls. Thanks, for, Thanks listening. for listening. And, and we back. will be back and be moldy. And be moldy. Next time. Next time. Yes. Yes. We'll see you there. We'll see you there.